Ayanna.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In Detroit, a funeral will be held Saturday for Ayanna Jones, the seven-year-old girl who was shot dead by police while she was sleeping in her own home. On Tuesday, a lawyer for Jones' family filed a pair of lawsuits against the Detroit police for the killing that sparked outrage in the Motor City. Shortly after midnight Sunday, police raided the family's home looking for a murder suspect, they said. The raid began when police threw an incendiary device known as a flashbang grenade through a front window of the home. The device reportedly burned the little seven-year-old. She was sleeping on the couch. What happened next is in dispute. Detroit police say the police then entered the home and the girl was shot after Officer Joseph Weekly's gun accidentally went off following a tussle with Ayanna's grandmother. But the family's attorney, Jeffrey Feiger, says he's seen video contradicting, contradicting the police account of the killing. Feiger says video of the incident shows police open fire before they'd entered the house. A bullet from the gun pierced Ayanna's head and neck. On the night of the raid, the Detroit police officers were accompanied by a film crew from the reality TV show, The First 48. The show's network, A&E, has yet to publicly release the video shot of the raid. Meanwhile, the Detroit News has revealed the officer involved in the shooting, Joseph Weekly, was accused in a 2009 federal lawsuit of being part of a team that broke into a home, shot two dogs, and pointed a pistol at children, including an infant. On Tuesday, Ayanna's grandmother, Martella Jones, described the night of the shooting. As soon as they hit the window, I hit the floor, and I went to reach for my granddaughter. I call her Malia. Her name is Ayanna. Because she's my mini-me. <laughs> my mini-me. <laughs> I seen the light leave out her eyes. I knew she was dead. And she had blood coming out of her mouth. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. With my seven-year-old grandbaby, my beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous granddaughter. My goodness, who type of people? What type of people? Can't trust the police. You can't trust the trick police. You can't trust them. You can't trust them. They wouldn't even let us go check on the other babies. They wouldn't even let us go check on the other kids. They ain't so rude to us. And when I see y'all done killed my grandbaby, y'all done effed up now. And when I said, oh, sh and grabbed her up and ran out the house. <laughs> That was Mertilla Jones talking about the Detroit police shooting that killed her seven-year-old granddaughter, Ayanna. The grandmother was speaking at a news conference organized by the family's attorney, Jeffrey Feiger, who called on the Detroit police to acknowledge how the tragedy unfolded. For 15, five to 15 officers who know what happened, I'm asking that some of them have the ounce of the milk of human kindness to go forward to Chief Evans, Go forward to your assistant chief, go forward to your eternal affairs, and admit and tell them the truth about what happened. There is a videotape that will show the truth. I'm asking Chief Evans and Mayor Bing to acknowledge that there was never an altercation with Ayanna's grandmother and that the shot was fired from outside and that a bomb was thrown onto or next to Ayanna, burning her before she was shot. And I'm asking the powers that be within the administration to apologize to Mertilla, because Mertilla was taken into custody afterwards when the officers attempted to come up with some type of explanation or cover-up or alibi for the shooting, they decided to blame Mertilla. And they claimed that Mertilla was involved falsely in a dispute with them, and so they arrested Mertilla. They handcuffed this grandmother. They took her to the Detroit lockup. They transported her in chains to the Detroit Receiving Hospital to have her drug tested. They brought her back to the Detroit lockup and had her tested for the existence of gunpowder. And then they inexplicably and just quietly let her go. That type of, and then subsequently had a press conference where it was suggested that what the uh, assistant police chief could be uh, uh, believed was that there was a altercation with Mertilla and the gun went off. And that is totally false. Mayor Bing, Chief Evans, I'm asking you on behalf of this family 
I'm asking the officers who were present at the scene come forward now and tell the truth. I saw the videotape. You all know what happened at this scene. Please don't let this child have died in vain. This is an opportunity to come together, not to tear us apart. And I believe ultimately that's what has to happen, that this city not be torn apart, that this city be brought together by an admission by the powers that be that this was wrong, this is what happened. Apologize to this father and this mother and this grandmother. Apologize now and we can start the road to healing. That was attorney Jeffrey Feger. To talk more about the shooting, we're joined in Detroit right now by Ron Scott, founder of the Detroit Coalition Against Police Brutality. Still with us here in New York is Reverend Jesse Jackson. Ron Scott, thanks for joining us. Uh, talk about what happened and what you're demanding now. Well, basically, uh, we, and uh, I'm glad Reverend Jackson is with you because he knows the work that we've been doing over the last, um, oh, 15 years in this and of longer in terms of police uh, brutality in the city. Uh, this has been going on for a long time. And what we're speaking to is the policy that was enacted. Uh, this policy, we saw an uptick in this in uh, the beginning of this uh, current administration, where, in effect, the zero tolerance framework was established and essentially these uh, special response teams, fugitive apprehension teams, uh, multi-jurisdictional task forces with the aid of federal money have been conducting military style raids and uh, there's even a group here called a gang squad which has been essentially uh, just terrorizing <clears throat> a number of people. So this was sort of bound to happen. We had tried to raise the cry, uh, raise the question, point out that these kinds of things were over the top. And uh, we were vilified for raising that. At this particular point, it is unfortunate that we've been deemed correct uh, by virtue of such a tragic, tragic situation. So we're saying Detroit is under two federal consent decrees. For the last seven years, they've been under federal consent decrees for uh, issues of force and for issues of confinement, both which affected uh, Mrs. Jones and her family and so forth. And so we're saying that the policy in this situation needs to be changed. We're asking for Judge Cook and the federal court that is overseeing the consent decrees to essentially uh, demand and make sure that uh, the city of Detroit live up to and change rapidly its policies. We're asking that the uh, situation re in involving uh, these special response teams and, and the team that did this with uh, this, this